Hi there, and welcome to my tutorial on how to build this appointment calendar in Google Sheets. What's nice about this calendar is that you can select the desired month and enter the year to automatically get the calendar layout that you want. From there, you can simply type in any events, appointments, or other information for each day in your calendar. And then you can print the calendar by selecting the cells, then go to File, Print, change this to Selected Cells, select the orientation that you want, and you're ready to print. All right, now that we know what we're building, let's go ahead and make it. Beginning with a blank Google Sheets spreadsheet, let's start by setting up the structure of the worksheet. Begin by selecting column A, right click, resize column, and set the size to 50 and click OK. Next, select row two, right click, resize row, set the height to 50, and click OK. All right, before we actually start building the calendar itself, we need to add a few lists that we will be using later on. Specifically, we need to create a list of the months and a list of the weekdays. So starting in cell J9, type in January, then use the fill handle to extend the list to cell J20. Next, select cell K9, and type in S-U-N. Then use the fill handle to extend the list to cell K15. Awesome. Now we need to designate a space to pick the weekday that will mark the first day of our week in the calendar. So select cell J7 and type in week start and also bold the text. Then select cell K7 and go to data, data validation. Click on add rule if you have to, and then for the criteria, select drop down from a range. Now click the select data range button and select the weekdays in K9 through K15. Then click OK and then done. You can now close the panel on the right and then select the weekday that you want to be the start of your week for your calendar. All right, at this point, Let's create the spaces where the user can select the desired month and enter the year. So go ahead and select cells B2 through C2 and merge these cells into one. Then go to data, data validation. Click on add rule and for the criteria, select drop down from a range. Now click the select data range button, select the months in J9 through J20 and click OK. Then under advanced options, select plain text and then click done. We do this just to give it a nice clean look. You can now close the panel on the right and type a month into the cell. Let's also fix up the formatting to make it look a little better. So go ahead and center the text horizontally and also vertically. Increase the font size to 18 and bold the text. Then add a light gray fill color, click on the border button, select gray for the color, and apply the border around the edges. This will help the cell stand out when we hide the grid lines later on. That said, go ahead and select cells G2 through H2 next. Then merge the cells and type in a year value like 2024. Now center the text horizontally and also vertically. Increase the font size to 18 and bold the text. Add a light gray fill color. Then click on the border button and apply the border around the edges. Awesome, now it's time to start adding in all of the formulas. And the formulas that we are going to add are going to update the calendar automatically based on the selected month, selected year, and the selected weekday to start each week. So start by selecting cell J5 and enter the following formula. Equals date function, select the chosen year, comma, x match function, select the chosen month, comma, select the list of months in J9 through J20, close parentheses, comma, one, close parentheses, and enter. This formula calculates the first day of the month for the chosen month and year. 
Next, we need to calculate the weekday number of the chosen weekday. So, in cell K5, enter the following formula. Equals X match function, select the chosen weekday in cell K7, comma, select the list of weekdays, close parentheses, and enter. Awesome. To make it easier to write our remaining formulas here in a few seconds, let's first assign range names to the two values that we just calculated. Now, range names are simply names that we give to a specific cell or range of cells to make it easier to reference them later on, and this will make more sense as we move forward. That said, you will create the first range name by selecting the calculated date in cell J5, and then in the name box near the top left corner of the spreadsheet, type in the name start date. And make sure that there are no spaces in this name because spaces are not allowed in range names. Now to complete the range name, just press the enter key on your keyboard. Awesome. For the second range name, select cell K5, and in the name box, type in the name of week start, and then press enter. You should now have two range names, and you can see them by clicking this down arrow right here. Google Sheets will list any range names that exist within the spreadsheet. Okay, now that we have the range names ready to go, let's continue on with our formulas. Select cell B4 and enter the formula, equals week start, which is one of the range names that we created earlier, then press enter. Next, select cell C4 and enter the following formula, equals if function B4 equals 7 comma 1 comma B4 plus 1, close parentheses, and enter. Now, use the fill handle to copy this formula all the way to cell H4. Awesome. Now let's add the formulas that will display the corresponding weekday below each number. Starting in cell B5, enter the following formula. Equals index function, select the weekdays, press F4 on your keyboard to make this an absolute reference, comma, B4, close parentheses, and enter. Then use the fill handle to copy this formula to cell H5. Now we have the weekdays that will update depending on the selected weekday in cell K6. For example, if you change Sunday to Monday, you can see how all of the weekdays for your calendar update accordingly. Okay, to make things a little nicer to look at, go ahead and select columns B through H and adjust the horizontal alignment to center. Nice. Now we just have a few more formulas to write. For the next formula, go ahead and select cell B7 and enter the following. Equals if function weekday function start date close parentheses less than week start comma start date minus weekday function start date close parentheses plus week start minus 7 comma start date minus weekday function start date close parentheses plus week start close parentheses enter okay this is the most complicated formula in the whole spreadsheet, so make sure you've got all of the details just right. And once you've got it, select cell C7 next and enter the formula, equals B7 plus 1, enter. You can then use the fill handle to copy the formula to cell H7. Next, select cell B12 and enter the formula, equals H7 plus 1, and enter. Then, in C12, enter the formula, equals B12 plus 1, and enter. And finally, use the fill handle to copy the formula in B12 to cell H12. At this point, 
go ahead and select the range B12 through H12 and use Ctrl C to copy. Then select cell B17 and use Ctrl V to paste. Select cell B22 and use Ctrl V to paste. Select cell B27 and use Ctrl V to paste. And select cell B32 and use Ctrl V to paste. You are now done with all of the formulas in your calendar. From here, we just need to add in some formatting to make everything look nice. Let's start by going to View, Show, and Uncheck Grid Lines. This will make it easier to see the formatting that we add in. So next, select B5 through H5, click the Borders button, and apply all borders. And now watch this. Go ahead and select B7 through H7 and press the F4 key on your keyboard. This will repeat the last formatting action that you took and apply the same borders to the range. How cool is that? Go ahead and select B12 through H12 and press F4. Then select B17 through H17 and press F4. Select B22 through H22 and press F4. Select B27 through H27, press F4, then select B32 through H32, and press F4. Awesome. Now we need to add borders to the rest of the calendar. To do this, start by selecting the range B8 through B11, then click the Borders button and apply borders on the edges. Now just use the Fill handle to copy the formatting across the row. After that, select the range B8 through H11 and use Ctrl C to copy. Then select B13 and use Ctrl V to paste. Then select B18 and paste. Select B23 and paste. Select B28 and paste. And select B33 and paste. Okay, it's really starting to come together, so next, Let's select the range B5 through H5, bold the text, and add a light green fill color. Nice. Now for the individual days. Another thing we can do to save time is use the control key to select multiple ranges at once. So go ahead and select the range B7 through H7, and then hold the control key to also select B12 through H12. Then also select B17 through H17, B22 through H22, B27 through H27, and B32 through H32. Now with all these ranges selected, bold the text, add a light blue fill color, and then click the More Formats button and select Custom Date and Time. From here, we can format the dates to look differently and make them easier to read. So just scroll through the different options, choose one that you like, and click Apply. Awesome, the calendar looks great. There's only one more thing that we need to add, and that is the conditional formatting to gray out the days that do not belong in the selected month above. So with all of the dates still selected, go to Format, Conditional Formatting. Then, in the panel on the right, under Format Cells If, select Custom Formula Is. Then, for the formula, enter equals, month function, B7, close parentheses, does not equal, which are the less than and greater than symbols, and then the month function, and then the cell address of the calculated first day of the month, and we have that in cell J5. After that, be sure to put in dollar signs to make this an absolute reference. Finally, close parentheses to finish the function, and you're done with the formula. Okay, now all that's left is to select a light gray for the fill color, and then make the text color a slightly darker gray. You can now click Done and then close the panel on the right. For the final touch, you can select columns J and K, right click, and hide the columns, then select row 4, right click, and hide the row. With that, you are finished with your dynamic appointment calendar in Google Sheets. I hope you had fun watching and learned something new. 
leave a comment to let me know how you did, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. That said, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next Spreadsheet Life video.